said there are several levels of, uh, of discussion, of examination, of investigation, which we will continue to focus on. Uh, ABC's Martha Raditz uh, is at the State Department this morning. You may recall yesterday there were some, some reports that the Pentagon had in some fashion been attacked. That went away very quickly. That was simply not true. But for the U.S. government, the State Department is the connection to the rest of the world. And Martha, tell us first just what's happening in the building. People come to work this morning? They did come to work, Peter. They have secured this building. They went through the building late yesterday and again this morning. And the head of diplomatic security, Dave Carpenter, reported to Secretary Powell that he thought the building was safe at this point. Secretary Powell has been walking through the building, giving a few interviews. There was a full counter-assault team out in front wherever Secretary Powell went, but they do feel the building's fairly secure. The reports yesterday that there was some kind of bomb in the State Department happened after we were evacuated. We heard an explosion outside. I didn't think it was nearby the State Department. I think probably what it was was a secondary blast from the Pentagon because that's just across the river from here. Uh, Martha, in terms of State Department operations, both here and at home, uh, my understanding is about 25% of American embassies overseas are still closed for security precautions, but there's a real emphasis to get the U.S. up and visibly running, correct? I, I think that's part of the reason you see everybody back here today. They really want to put the best face on this possible as possible. They want to say, we're back at work. That's why they're out at the Pentagon today as well, despite the fact that half of the building is closed. They've still got the Pentagon up and running. They've got the briefing room up and running. You're going to hear Secretary Powell brief the press in about a half an hour, 45 minutes from now. They want to say they're on top of this. And they are getting intelligence reports. They are saying, Secretary Powell will not say this on camera, but officials will say off camera they think it's the Osama bin Laden organization, that they have human intelligence and signal intelligence. This is not just because of the sophistication of the attack. They're hearing human intelligence and signal intelligence that lead to Osama bin Laden. This is, of course, after the attack they got these reports. Uh, Martha, the Secretary has already said that there is good evidence mounting against those responsible, and he's also had some pretty strong remarks reflecting what the President said yesterday about what the United States might do if another nation is ever found to be complicit in this. I think you saw the warrior in Colin Powell this morning when he was talking on Good Morning America saying this is a war we should prepare for a long-term conflict and he's talking about on the diplomatic front as well as militarily they are indeed looking at whether or not they can target certain areas these training camps they talk about I just talked to one official and I said are you talking about training camps anywhere outside of Afghanistan he said we just don't know at this point okay Martha thanks very much we'll be back to you uh, throughout the day um, just to bring you up to date uh, as we as we look at where we at in terms of these two crime scenes and let us not forget there is one other aircraft uh, which crashed in in Pennsylvania last night. That continues to be a mystery as to how that aircraft actually went down, but that's United Flight 93, uh, 757, which was headed from Newark in New Jersey to San Francisco. And there are 38 passengers and seven crew on that flight who we believe to be dead. In total, 265, 266 passengers and crew on board these four aircraft yesterday um, have all died. And it's that one area where we already have a handle on precisely how many people died. We do not have it at the Pentagon, nor um, at the Trade Towers in, in Lower New York. ABC's Lisa Stark, who covers aviation for us, uh, has been on this all the time. Lisa, tell us, if you're you in Seattle this morning again? I am, Peter, yes. Uh, bring us up to date on your beat, would you? Well, Peter, the, the one bit of new information that we have this morning is more information about that phone call from the American Airlines flight, Flight 11. Uh, that was the uh, 767 from Boston's Logan Airport headed to Los, Los Angeles. It was the first plane uh, that crashed into one of the Twin Towers uh, in Manhattan. We had earlier reported that a flight attendant did manage to call the airline as the hijacking uh, was occurring. We had reported that she had said a number of flight attendants had been stabbed and that the uh, hijackers had stormed into the cockpit. We've now learned uh, from a, a source that the flight attendant also reported that the hijackers appeared to have mace on board the airplane and that they had maced a number of the passengers, uh, those in business class, we're told, as well as possibly those in first class. 
So I'm sure it was a chaotic scene on board that, that aircraft uh, as the uh, hijackers made their way up to the cockpit, uh, creating chaos in the back of the plane before they went into the front of the plane. We've also learned this morning that uh, on the two planes that went into the World Trade Tower, both that American Airlines flight as well as a United 767, apparently, uh, according to government sources, the hijackers, it appears on the planes, uh, fooled with the transponders. Now, this is, a, this is a, a something on the plane that sends a signal out to air traffic controllers so they know the altitude, the airspeed, the designation of the airplane. We're told by government sources that on the uh, American Airlines flight, Flight 11, the transponder was turned off completely. So uh, what that would mean, uh, what we know of air traffic control, what that would mean is that controllers would only have a signal on their radar screen that there was a, a target out there, that there was a plane, but they would know nothing about it, not its airspeed, its altitude, its designation. On the other plane, the United Airlines plane, we're told someone fooled with the transponder. I don't believe it was turned off entirely, but again, the computer reads that as, as an error. It's not sure what's going on, and I'm told by government sources that it may actually stop tracking the plane. Again, controllers, what I know of air traffic control is that controllers would still see a signal, they'd still see a blip, but they wouldn't have additional information about the airplane. If, if that uh, proves to be true, and as you know, information changes uh, in the early stages of these things, but if that proves ultimately to be the case, it would mean that these hijackers were very sophisticated, knew exactly what they were going to do, cut off communications as quickly as they could, uh, and certainly didn't want anyone to know what was going on up there uh, at 30,000 feet as these planes were heading toward Manhattan. Many thanks, Lisa. We'll come back to you uh, often throughout the day. And you use the word uh, which I think has begun uh, uh, to be very obvious to people wherever they're watching, listening, or trying to investigate is, and this is this level of sophistication involved in the attacks themselves. And back with me, I'm delighted to say, is John Miller, uh, who has done probably, I think, more as much as anybody in this news division and others to try to keep a handle on these various organizations and groups. Can you just bring us up to date again on where you think the investigation is, what we may have found out, and the level of sophistication that appears apparent? Uh, busy